when I got through riding metal ropes this past summer, I uh, included three appendices. For some reason, I don't even know where the idea came into my head, but I guess I figured not everybody's necessarily going to want to try uh, choking up and spreading the hands or hopping around in the box and doing some of the things that dead ball era hitters did a long time ago. You, if you don't do them perfectly and if you don't have spectacular success at them, uh, the coach is probably not going to be at all impressed. And uh, so therefore, I suggested three different things. I have three different appendices at the end of the book, and I tried to figure out how we could apply some of the lessons from the dead ball era to uh, hitting styles that are not today hitting styles exactly, but uh, more recent hitting styles. I talked about Ted Williams, about the swinging of the hips and everything. That's a rather level swing. That's, that's a good swing. And of course, Charlie Lau, who was kind of my hero, L-A-U, Charlie Lau, uh, the art of hitting 300, a great hitting coach, uh, the late Charlie Lau. I, I love his stuff, love his techniques, but uh, I want to talk this time about Appendix B, which I call uh, the crouch and thrust, and I use Johnny Mize as my poster child for that particular kind of style. Johnny Mize was uh, a great hitter who would have had even more incredible numbers. You can't see it. It's glaring a little bit. There we go. And I love the title of his book. It's just how to hit. You know, it sounds like the title that a, a Marine would give to a hitting manual, and that's what Johnny was. I was going to say that he would have had even more incredible career numbers if he hadn't uh, sacrificed a couple of years, I think, at least, out of the height of his career, you know, his best years to fighting in the South Pacific during World War II. But he was a, a terrific hitter, a guy who had over uh, 300 lifetime average as well as pretty sure over 400 home runs. Uh, I was just going to point out that, uh, you know, he did write this book, and it's pretty standard stuff for the time, but as I got to flipping through it, I, I thought I would also uh, mention a couple of pages in the book, see if I could show them on the screen. For instance, uh, we talk about this in all of my uh, hitting material about gripping the bat with the so-called knocker knuckles aligned. You can see that Johnny back in about, you know, the late 40s, early 50s, whenever this book came out, uh, was preaching the same gospel. His thumb and index, that's the pointer finger, are not tightly wrapped around the barrel. You don't want to do that. You want to keep your wrists flexible. Now that's something that isn't a concern apparently for a lot of the hitters today. And I think the reason is that with their, this is a 35 inch bat, of course you're not going to use anything like this, but with the 31, 32 inch bats today, uh, with the huge barrels, you have hitters doing the big leg kick and leg down early. Uh, the back elbow is cocked way up there and they're releasing the bat very early. See if I can avoid hitting the Christmas tree here, but this is a this is a great swing for tall guys, and that's why we don't endorse it on small ball success, because this is not going to work very well if you're five foot six or five foot eight. This is for six foot four guys. You just sling down on the ball and you release it early, and you've got that tiny little handle that all of you guys grow up with using the metal bat. So of course you're thumbs and your forefingers are wrapped tight around the bat. And since you have the early release, it just carries through. Now, the, the thing about this swing is you're going to try to hit the ball as it passes over the plate because you're going to put all this backspin on the ball as it comes over. And if you're a big tall guy and you backspin the ball severely like that, if you sweep under it to that degree, you're going to hit a huge pop-up which may very well go over the fence. If you're five foot six and you hit that same 
pop up. It's a, what they used to call a can of corn. It's a medium deep fly ball if you're lucky. Probably not even deep enough to be a successful sacrifice. So that's why Johnny and others, all the way up to, I've heard Cal Ripken Jr. talk about this, the knocker knuckles. You want to keep your wrists loose so that they can uh, adjust all the way through the swing and keep the bat relatively level. Uh, I was going to point out too, I think this is kind of funny, that Johnny, you look at the, which I've already shown you, despite all the glare, I'm sorry about the glare, but if you can kind of see that, his stroke, it looks like, and he's got that front toe pointing up, he's rocking back, and they do, in that era, they try to keep the weight back, and they're doing something like an early version of our launch angle these days. And uh, here's an actual swing, which Johnny says is going to be a home run, and he talks about... Uh, Notice how I am meeting the ball in italics here, meeting the ball in front of my swing. This was a home run. Well, Johnny, uh, I don't know. The ball is coming in there uh, into the frame of the bottom picture, but your bat is still just beginning to come out over the plate. I don't think you got it in front of the plate. I think what he did, and this is critical to what I wanted to talk about here, I think he got the ball, even though he's doing what everyone says back then, and he's staying back. He's, his bat, when you stay back like that and don't let your weight come all the way forward, it's going to have a dip in it. So the only way you're going to backspin the ball is if the bat is in its downward transit over the center of the plate. And it's about to come up, but I'm sure that he must have struck that ball right about here, and there's still a, the bat. The barrel has very much leveled off, but there's probably still a little bit of backspin. Uh, it's coming into the ball from slightly above, which is what we love at small ball success. And I think that's how he got the home run. Uh, it, it's just funny when you see some of these old timers talk about what they used to do, and here, look, here's a picture of me doing it, and if you really look closely at it, a lot of times that ain't what they're doing exactly. But they didn't have video, so they didn't know exactly what they were doing. Just real quickly, Johnny, all the guys back in these times, they if they wrote a book, they had to have their all-time great team. So here's Johnny toward the end talking about Ty Cobb. If you look really closely at this, and you probably can't see it on this picture, but there's a little bit of bat showing between Cobb's hand spread. And I don't know, I just never miss a chance to try to point that out because so many people try to explain away Ty Cobb's hand spread by saying that, oh, he didn't really swing that way. He put his hands together before he started his swing. Now, you can find pictures of that all over the place, of him being part through the, the top hand comes down some of the way, but... Uh, it might come down all the way as he finishes, but he was not putting his hands together before he started to swing. That just ain't true. I don't know why people say that. Well, quickly, let me wrap this up because I'm going to do a demonstration uh, outside when the weather gets a little bit better. But I'm going to try to suggest how you could do the, the Johnny Mai swing. It's a fairly level stroke. You're... you're Crouching, this is what we say in metal ropes, you're crouching and then just thrusting off the back leg, thrusting hard. It's a good swing if you want your feet spread and uh, a little guy might well have a wide body and a strong lower body. The only thing that I would do to adjust this, instead of staying back, if you stay back all the way and then do the launch angle thing, as we've already said, Unless you hit the ball right here, uh, you're not going to get a lot of backspin on it because the bat's going to be coming up. Uh, unless it's a high pitch, and sometimes this can happen, you can get the ball as your barrel starts up if it's a letter high pitch, and you can still lift it over the fence. But most guys are not going to top spin a ball over the fence. And besides, strike zones these days are a lot lower 
than they were back in Johnny's day. So I think it's a much better idea if you want this kind of swing, you can, you can crouch, you can spread your feet out, crouch. Uh, I like to kind of load up with the hands forward first. In so many athletic movements, you move in the opposite direction where you want to go. You do this to sort of gather your weight to, to go back. You go forward a little bit and then you can, if you do that, you can lift up your front foot a little bit and get, why do you want to do that? I would do it to get a bit of a forward weight shift. I would actually like to, and one other thing I meant to show on Johnny's home run photo there is that he actually is shifting his weight forward more than it looks like in the cover picture of the book. So, so many of these great hitters, I think, really were not staying back as much as they thought. We're going to try, when I do this outside, going to try to stay with the essentials of Johnny Mize's swing, but I'm going to try to keep the bats transit down into the ball for a longer period of time uh, so that I can enter the ball, even if I get it out in front of the plate. This is not the, the launch angle thing with the barrel coming up. I'm going to try to keep coming down into the ball so that I can backspin it. By the way, Nolan Arenado does that very well. He's not uh, exactly struggling, is he? So, we'll hands forward and then back into a crouch. Maybe lift a foot up a little bit and then come forward so that we can get the barrel down into the pitch. And we'll go outside in a little bit and we'll see how that works. Uh, in other words, this is, you can use swings of yesteryear. You can not dead ball swings, but swings from your dad's day or your grandfather's day. You can still recycle those, but you can use some of the lessons all the way back from the dead ball era. There are some things that you can work in to uh, more contemporary swings, and I think you make them work better, especially if you're a shorter guy. You want low line drives with a high percentage of falling in. That's what we're all about at smallballsuccess.com.